Financial planning these days covers an incredible amount of information from tax through investments, retirement, insurance, aged care, age pension, assets longevity, portfolio creation, and many, many more. So my goal is to cover as many as possible of those topics, but at the same time, I want to keep this channel interesting, vivid, and informative. I found this amazing article explaining impact of superannuation on our retirement outcomes, so I thought I would share the main findings with you. So today we will discuss how superannuation has changed the way we derive our income in retirement and exactly how retirees depend on their income streams in retirement. My name is Catherine Isbrand from About Retirement. I'm a certified financial planner and you are watching About Retirement TV, the place where you can find all the information that you need if you are preparing for retirement or if you have already retired. Introduction of the superannuation system in Australia has an incredible impact on our financial outcomes. Not only it is compulsory, so it is employees' responsibility to pay for it, but then you have all those tax benefits that just tease you to continue putting more and more into superannuation. Why? Well, because you can save on tax and who likes to pay taxes? Most people will do anything not to pay taxes or reduce them. So we buy the whole concept of contributing extra to superannuation. And that is fantastic. We pay lower tax, we save more in concessionally tax environment. So we love the whole idea. And so does the government, as in many cases, people will cancel themselves out of the age pension system, saving the government billions in payments. Retirement income these days is mostly from the superannuation system. As a matter of fact, over 1 million Australians were dependent on their superannuation pension payments in 2020. Surprisingly, around 75% of households living off their superannuation savings had less than 20% of their income from the government pension. In 2021-22, there was over $59 billion in various income streams providing payments to retirees. An interesting statistics for you from APRA Annual Superannuation Bulletin. In 2021-22, there were 1.3 million account-based pensions paying an average income of $20,353 per annum. We had 99,000 annuities with an average annual income of 47,294. It actually surprised me to see more than double annual payment size from annuities in comparison to account-based pensions. What that indicates is that majority of those annuities are of considerable original investment balance, only proving that wealthy families find a great deal of benefit in annuities. And I'm not surprised. I have been talking about annuities many times on this channel. So if you are not sure what benefits can annuities provide to you, watch those two videos, Annuities and Your Retirement, or Lifetime Annuities and Aged Care Annuities. And then there were 159,000 defined benefit pensions of an average annual income of $25,426. Over 330,000 people are receiving an income stream from the self-managed super fund with an average income of 47,900 per annum. 
What surprised me the most is the statistics that prove that in most cases, retirees draw down the full value of their pension accounts during their lifetime rather than leaving a substantial amount for a spouse or children. What that indicates is the fact that we live longer and we want good quality of life. I think every retiree worked hard to enjoy those years of retirement. Those are your years of fun, discovery, curiosity and spoiling yourself a little. Here is an interesting data for you. In 2020, ATO found that for 2.9 million Australians aged 70, only 540,000 had more than $1,000 in their super fund. Around 310,000 had more than $200,000. And only 180,000 had more than half a million dollars. And most of those high balances were in self-managed super fund. Well, I am not really surprised with those findings. However, out of those mentioned, 90% who passed away died with no superannuation left in their accounts. Having said that, in 2020, around 35,000 individuals had more than $3 million in superannuation, and 90% of those had self-managed super fund. Treasury estimates that number to grow to 80,000 by 2025-26. I talked about this issue in extra new tax in superannuation. This change will affect more people than you are told. This appears to be quite a controversial topic, so watch it and let me know your thoughts. So what does the increase of our superannuation savings mean? Well, more and more people retire with more private money than in the past. Consequently, an average retirement income is also higher, and that improves the quality of retirement life for many. The number of people eligible for full age pension is decreasing. The number of people not eligible for age pension at all is increasing. Which state in Australia is the wealthiest, meaning has the lowest number of retirees eligible for age pension in the age group 66 to 69, therefore beginning of age pension eligibility? Well, Tasmania, 47% of retirees are eligible for age pension. This is the highest number of age pension eligibility of retirees out of all states in Australia. In South Australia, 45%, in Queensland, 44 WA, 41 New South Wales, 40 Victoria, 38 Northern Territory, 36 ACT, 25 Therefore, our total national average is 42%. You might be surprised that ACT is the state with the lowest number of age pension recipients, but this is due to high number of government employment that provides a defined benefit pensions that take those people out of age pension system due to high superannuation pension payments. Let's now have a look at age pension eligibility based on age. Within the age bracket 66 to 69, 42% of people are eligible. Between ages 70 and 74, 63%. Between ages 75 to 79, 83%. 85 to 89, 84%. And people over the age of 90, 71%. As you can see from the table, at the beginning of retirement, less than 50% of retirees are eligible for age pension, with numbers increasing up to 84% at the age of 90. Also, for most retirees, the age pension payments increase the older they get. That indicates that people spend their savings, their super and pension 
and it is good to see that the age pension provides a safety net in retirement if the assets reduce in value over time. But then, past the age of 90, the number of people eligible for age pension decreases. Well, why is that? My guess is that having a greater wealth extends life expectancy, improves quality of life and allows for better medical care. The other reason is that most people past the age of 90 are singles and the rules for age pension eligibility are much tighter, especially the asset test. And this is why every stage of your life needs to be planned correctly if you wish to keep your age pension intact. I hope you enjoyed this review of Age Pension in Australia and how the superannuation savings are changing the landscape of our retirement. If so, give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. To learn how to set up your savings for the best retirement you can have, visit my website aboutretirement.com.au where you can find lots of articles, videos and other resources all devoted to your preparation for retirement. And while you are there on my website, don't forget to sign up to my newsletter to be kept updated with all the changes that can impact your retirement. If you need advice how to set yourself up financially for the best retirement you could have, how to organize your income streams correctly, increase your eligibility for any government benefits such as age pension, or how to deal with tax when selling assets prior or during your retirement or any other financial issues, just book a consultation meeting with me through my website. And now I invite you to watch those mentioned videos, Annuity and Your Retirement, a great introduction to benefits of annuities for your retirement. And then continue the annuity topic, lifetime annuities and age care annuities. Those are retirement income streams built for a specific purpose. Enjoy, and I will be speaking with you in my next video. Bye.